Ever since the beginning, Disney's new DuckTales has been building to a very specific mystery. One that has nebulously been floating above the Disney Duck canon ever since the days of Carl Barks. The question of the parentage of Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And in season two, we finally got a solid answer by introducing us to Donald Duck's sister, Della. Bringing Della Duck into the official story rather than having her just a piece of the duck family tree or a mystery in a, a few rare specific Danish comics was a huge step forward for the story building of the Disney duck world. And the way she came back was big and incredible and a whole completely different video that I already did. But now that she is back, we're set with a whole new expectation. We're no longer wondering what the mystery of Della Duck is, but we're wondering who Della Duck is and who she is and what she means to the other characters. To that end, we've started to see her interacting with her children, with Huey and Louie specifically, or Huey and Dewey specifically, and, and Louie as well in some later episodes that are coming soon. But there's more people than just her kids to think about here. We've got another pilot who she's at odds with, and we've got another kid who's been looking up to her. That's right, Huey, Dewey, and Louie may be her actual children, but there's another child in the duck house who's been idolizing the duck and McDuck family for her entire life. And one of its greatest legends has just come from the annuls of mystery into reality in front of her eyes. That's right, we're talking about Webigail Vanderquack. And this is a hard relationship for her because Della isn't her mother. And so Webby has to find a way to identify with this new person the only way she can by solving the only mystery Della Duck hasn't. This is the Golden Armory of Cornelius Coot. Disney's DuckTales has a really good habit of making sure that every few episodes takes a few moments to focus in on a character and tell us a little bit more about who they are. In the case of Scrooge or Huey, Dewey, and Louie and Donald, there's a good starting point for that because we already know these characters. But one character, Webby, was completely reimagined and redesigned for the show. So for me, when we get a Webby episode, it's a really special chance to take a look at what's essentially a brand new character. Over the course of the show's first two seasons, we've gotten to know a Webby that's much more adventurous and obsessive than her original 1987 incarnation. On the surface, you might make the mistake of thinking she's a little too perfect, a little too good of an adventurer, and just a little too capable when faced with danger. As the show went on, however, we learned there's a lot more to Webby. Underneath that super adventurer capable girl is someone who's really deep down sort of shy, socially awkward, and who just desperately wants friends and a family. That need for friendship and a family is, in a way, Webby's fatal flaw. And it seems like what some of her more obsessive personality traits stem from. Today's obsession is solving the one mystery Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mother never could. What is the mystery behind Cornelius Coote, the founder of Duckburg? As legend has it, Cornelius Coote supposedly fended off the ancestors of the Beagle Boys with some sort of mysterious ghost army. And while on a trip with the family to the fort, Webby is determined to find Cornelius Coote's lost treasure and unravel the mystery of that mythical golden armory that helped him single-handedly defend Fort Duckburg. It's an obsession that will liven up an otherwise sort of low-key field trip. Churn, baby, churn! Yeah! Yeah! Yup! And I'm bored. While Webby and the boys are off trying to solve one of Della's old mystery, Della is solving a mystery of her own, trying to figure out what Launchpad has been doing to her plane all these years. The answer, of course, is crashing it. And to Della's complete horror, putting it back together after every destructive landing. I used to use super glue to assemble the plane, but it proved tricky. Now I use gum. <laughs> And although those two plots make up the bulk of the story of this episode, I don't think the story is actually what I want to talk about today. What I loved about this episode isn't so much the mystery it unravels or the story it is, 
but one of the things I like best about this series, which is that it takes the time to focus on the characters and how they interact with each other. They're not just pushing forward to get through a mystery and figure out the Scooby-Doo ending of it all. These characters are growing together and learning together. And in this episode, we see both Della and Webby grow and learn about themselves and each other in different ways. But they do this apart and not really together. In a way, it's actually very one-sided character growth. Webby internally struggles throughout this entire episode to compare herself with Della. But Webbygale herself is actually the furthest thing from Della's mind. Della herself is simply too busy worrying about her plane and its caretaker. Launchpad McQuack. Seeing these two characters head to head is something I kind of didn't know I needed. In fact, when I first saw them together in Della Duck's first episode back on Earth when she returned, it suddenly hit me on the head. There are now two pilots here. Scrooge's old, capable TIE pilot, Della Duck, and the caretaker he had in between, the completely lovable but generally incompetent launch pad. A pilot who's a truly skilled pilot versus one whose talent isn't flying planes, but crashing them. Watching these two face off and how completely different they are from each other is just a great bit of comedy. Della rushing behind Launchpad to fix his incompetence and do things the right way, and Launchpad's completely oblivious, earnest attitude just happily fixing the plane. It really speaks to Launchpad's character. He's just happy to be here and to be a pilot, but Della actually is a pilot, and she kind of has a problem with the fact that Launchpad's just kind of plain a pilot. Sorry, it's not personal. It's just that you know you're a bad pilot, right? The sting of this this blunt confirmation doesn't last long because Launchpad is everybody's friend. And through his overconfidence, it kind of tricks Della into being his teacher, which gives us this. Launchpad, not just learning from Della, but wearing the pilot hat thing. I have no idea what it's called, but he's wearing a pilot hat cowl and goggles, just like in the old series. And look, I'm just, I'm just totally here for that, guys. And it's kind of funny because this Launchpad Della face-off totally isn't the main story or point of this episode. It's just something I find completely delightful. Launchpad wearing the traditional pilot headgear, interacting with Della, being oblivious and, and showing the difference between how he has sort of fumbled through being a pilot versus her skill. But that isn't to say that it isn't important. It may seem like a bunch of rambling gag scenes that just juxtapose these two characters, but it's actually an important analog for the real story going on here. Because Launchpad isn't just Launchpad here. In these scenes, he's also Webby. Well, at least thematically, he's Webby. Launchpad has a dream to be a pilot, something he's strived for his whole life and has sort of achieved. In the same way, Webby desperately wants to be a great adventurer. And together, the two of them share a role model in Della Duck. For Launchpad, Della is this perfect, idealized, capable, fun pilot that he wants to be. And for Webby, she's the girl adventurer who did it all, did more adventures than anybody, and grew up with Scrooge McDuck, just like Webby now is. And although Della's scenes with Launchpad are mostly lighthearted and fun and played for laughs, it's also really important character development for Della, because she spends almost the whole time being a terrible friend and mentor to Launchpad, just sort of passive-aggressively pushing him away for not living up to her expectations. But she learns throughout his time with him that he doesn't have to live up to her expectations, that there's maybe a different way to do things, and it's okay to do things your way. And that's super important, because it means when she gets to Webby, she already has an idea of how to do this right. Before we get to that climax, though, we probably should talk about Webby and the boys' adventure. The four of them are exploring tunnels found deep under Fort Duckburg, following clues left by Cornelius Coote in hopes of finding his golden armory, while they're at it, the Beagle Boys are following them, trying to get the treasure for themselves. It's very much a classic DuckTales adventure, minecarts and all, and it's great. I love that it still has the bits of comedy that new DuckTales does that disrupts the straight adventure. 
And I love the references it has back to iconography of the classic crawling through Doom stories that some of the original DuckTales had. And of course, like I just said, that minecart. Look at any packaging and advertising for the original 1987 DuckTales, and you see this. You see the kids riding in a minecart at a very similar angle to this shot here. It's, it's just a very iconic part of DuckTales, and this episode taking its time to reference that and put it in is just something really satisfying for someone who's being seen the boys in that minecart for their whole life. And yeah, I'm just really, look at that. It's great. I love it. I'm just happy it's there. It's a good little adventure. It really is. But again, that story and that adventure isn't the point of this episode for me. It's what that story serves. The character moments that story is driving to. And that character moment is this. Webby and Della having this connection of, of Webby desperately wanting to be like her hero here, Della Duck, and being kind of too shy to just talk to her directly. So instead, to make this connection, to prove she wants to be like her hero, she's going back and finding this mystery that Della never did. And working so hard because she's trying to live up to this, this incredible hero that's gone so much farther than her. And it takes Della herself talking Webby down to explain to her that she doesn't need to live up to anybody, just to be herself and move forward as herself to get Webby to see that she doesn't need to be her hero, she just needs to be Webby, and that's okay. It's also pretty gratifying to see that it took Della's own time with Launchpad for her to learn that she wasn't ready to see that in everybody. She naturally takes up the motherly position when teaching the kid, and telling her that there's more than one way to be a hero or a pilot, but that she didn't give Launchpad the same benefit of the doubt. You don't have to prove yourself to anyone, and oh boy, I should really apologize to Launchpad. And that's something that comes together in the climax. That Launchpad isn't necessarily a good pilot, but there's something special about him. He's a completely weird paradox that could only exist in DuckTales. He's the man that makes crashing in art. The man who no matter how many times he flies directly into the face of death, he survives. You madman! We almost died! But we didn't! Where? And it's a nice through line for Launchpad. We've seen him crashing throughout the series so far and had him make jokes about crashing, but this kind of puts a nice end cap on it. And besides, look at that! He's wearing the pilot hat! I just, I couldn't be happier. I'm almost sad that he puts the hat back on later, the regular baseball cap, but pilot hat, pilot hat, it happened, they did it. Good job. Okay, launch pad jokes aside, this episode really is about Webby and in a way I really like. It gives us a chance to revisit the character and see that despite finding a family and getting Lena back, she still has some of these anxieties about reaching her own potential and living up to her heroes. She's living her own dream, being a part of the McDuck family, but she's still not completely comfortable there and thinks she needs to earn it more. But she doesn't. There's a reason Scrooge lets her call him Uncle Scrooge. She's already part of the family, and she doesn't need to prove that to anyone. And despite this being the new, more confident Webby versus the 1987, you know, little girl Webby that was more of a trope, I like that this episode seems to be kind of a throwback to that 1987 world. In that, sometimes Webby would want to come along on adventures and the boys wouldn't want her because, you know, gross, she's a girl. But in this version, they're hesitant to go along with Webby because she's crazy. She seemed a little more webby than usual. Yeah, this is starting to feel less like a fun adventure thing and more like a dangerous obsession that kills us all thing. And although it may be Webby's obsessiveness that's making them reluctant to play with her and go on this adventure, it kind of felt like a throwback to me to how the boys would sort of put Webby on the outside in the original series. I might be reading into that, but I thought that was a nice narrative callback to the original series that instead of relying on that othering of, ew, she's a girl, instead capitalized on Webby's newer character traits and the negative points of her overconfidence and how that might push the boys away in a more modern, realistic way. It allowed there to be that same kind of tension between the kids we had in the original series, but with a much better character-driven reason. Unless, you know, like I said, I'm just reading into that too much. 
It may not be the most important episodes to the greater story arc that's happening in season two, but for me, it was a really fun episode that lets me spend some time with three characters who have really grown on me throughout the series. When the show started, I was a little nervous about Webby and redesigning her and making her this more rambunctious and, and forward uh, out, outgoing girl, but she became a character that I really enjoyed, both for her complete insanity, which has been consistently funny, but also for how she's secretly sensitive and a little unsure. Della has of course been a complete delight throughout the series, just seeing this character, and not only seeing this character we wanted to know about for so long, but also a really fun version of her that also has her own flaws, very similar to Webby, in obsessiveness. And Launchpad, I really thought was just too stupid when the series launched, but I got over that because he's consistently been funny and earnest and honest. He's not exactly the big brother character that I really liked from the 1987 DuckTales, but he's still a version of the character that I really enjoy now. And having all three of them together in one episode, thematically tied together in the same message, was something really fun. That's it for this review and episode of DuckTales from... What's the episode? The Golden Armory of Cornelius Coot. As always, thank you for watching, and thank you for putting up with the slowdown on reviews I've had. I will continue to be putting more out as we go on, but I'm no longer trying to rush through them, mostly for my own mental health. But that's it. Thank you for watching, and as always, take it easy, Internet.